Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nauli. This is the second video on the concept of gas pressure. Remember in the first video I left you with this question talking about um, pressure of uh, tires and the different units of pressure. I want to mention that um, <clears throat> when talking about you know uh, pressure units and we define something as one atmosphere that I talked about in the first video that's really the pressure on the surface of the earth in other words you know right here now as you go higher and higher um, as you uh, as we discussed in the first video there's less and less um, air or fewer particles so the pressure actually goes down as you go up okay because there's less uh, fewer uh, gas particles that are uh, available alright so we're gonna now talk about how we can actually measure pressure <clears throat> and the instrument that we use to measure pressure is something called a barometer okay and the concept of barometer is fairly straightforward I'm actually going to show you a video on this uh, on, on YouTube video that actually show how you can easily make a, a, a mercury barometer but the concept is as follows basically you have a column of mercury in other words you have a glass tubing and the glass tubing is filled completely with mercury uh, and there's no air in the, in, in the uh, mercury tube uh, and then you'll hold it just the usual way where the bottom of the tube is right here and then the top of the tube is open to the atmosphere. And what you're going to do is then you're going to flip the this uh, a tube containing mercury. So you're going to flip it upside down. And so the opening now is at the bottom and the um, closed part is at the top. But you're going to flip them into a dish or some kind of container that already has mercury in them. Okay? Liquid mercury. So you flip this uh, and you put this tubing into that dish and what you'll see of course is you expect the mercury to come down um, as a result of gravity because gravity is going to pull all the mercury down. <clears throat> but what you'll see is at some point this mercury would stop falling. Okay, And as illustrated in this particular um, slide, the reason the mercury stops falling is because there's a compensating force on the outside that's pushing down on the mercury on the dish that forces this mercury to stay up at a certain height. And that's what the atmospheric pressure is. And that was really the first uh, time people realized that there's some pressure exerted by gases around us, which we you know, can't see. Obviously, we can't see gases. But we realized that because of this particular experiment that these gases actually exert pressure. Okay? And that's, what, that's how we measure atmospheric pressure. And the height of the mercury okay which is given by this little uh, colored uh, line here the height of that mercury if the pressure is exactly one atmosphere is going to be 760 millimeters and that's how when I talked about in the first video that there's some relationship uh, between the units of um, to uh, uh, atmosphere to millimeters of mercury where one atmosphere as you can see here is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury that's how it was it was discovered because if you were to do this experiment at sea level you find that the mercury would go up to 760 millimeters of mercury now the person who did this experiment originally was uh, a guy named Torricelli uh, and so as a result that uh, unit of millimeters of mercury is often also called TOR T O R R uh, so in other words one millimeter of mercury is equal to one TOR and that's another unit that we talked about in the first video Okay, this is a picture of an uh, uh, old uh, mercury barometer. Um, we have some in the uh, science labs at SMC, so you might be able to have a chance to actually make a measurement with it. But what I'm going to do now is show you a brief video of how this uh, person basically makes a, a barometer uh, mercury uh, fairly straightforward. Okay, so now I'm going to play you a, a brief video in, uh, uh, on how you know you can make a mercury barometer, and I'll let the presenter here discuss how she actually makes the barometer using a, a tubing and a mercury. Thank you. 
pushing down on the mercury, pushing this up. And let's see how tall our column is. 744 millimeters. Okay, so I hope you have an appreciation now of how the, uh, you, you know, the, the way a barometer works using mercury in this particular case. So now I want you to consider this question, which is question number two on this gas pressure uh, unit or gas pressure video. Uh, and again, this is a question that you should answer on the form that's available next to the videos uh, that you have to turn in. Uh, the idea here is to kind of discuss a little bit why mercury is being used for a barometer, to make a barometer. Because obviously, as some of you might know, mercury is uh, toxic. There are vapors of mercury that you really don't want to breathe. Mercury can cause a lot of uh, different types of poisoning. Um, so th th there's really, you know, I in truth, uh, from a health perspective, not a good reason for us to use a mercury barometer. However, as you'll see when you work through this problem, there's a practical reason why mercury is chosen. And the height of the liquid that you have inside the barometer is actually proportional to the density of the liquid, okay? So if you think about two liquids, let's say water and mercury in this case, water has a density of one grams per milliliters and density of mercury is about 13.6 grams per milliliter. And what I want you to work through in this problem is to think about if let's say you use a mercury barometer and you measure the pressure around uh, uh, in your room and you find that the pressure happens to be 755 torr, consider if you were to replace, you know, if you're trying to make a, merc uh, a barometer with water instead of um, mercury, what would be the height of a column of water that would give you um, that you know, that would that allow you to measure the pressure that's equal to 755 torr, okay? So think about that question, again, with the understanding that the height of the liquid inside a barometer is proportional to its density, where a denser liquid, if you think about it, then will be, would rise uh, to a shorter height in comparison to a liquid that's less dense, okay? So you want to think about how would that barometer look like if it's made out of water instead of mercury. And again, you should answer this in the in the video form uh, next to the video. So the last concept I want to talk about is uh, something called a manometer. And a manometer is, is, you know, basically an instrument that's somewhat related to a barometer in, in the sense that it's basically an instrument you use to measure instead of just atmospheric pressure, you use to measure the pressure of a system of gases, okay? So if you have a collection of gas and you want to know what is the pressure of that gas, you're going to use a manometer to measure it. Now, how does it work? Fairly simple. This picture number two here shows how a manometer would look like uh, if the pressure of the gas inside is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere on the outside. So the manometer is, com uh, is m structured uh, in the way where you have a container holding your gases and then you have the other side of the manometer open to the atmosphere. If the two um, pressures are equal inside and outside, then the height of this mercury or whatever liquid you use would be exactly equal, okay? So it says here pressure of gas is equal to P naught or P zero, which is just usually atmospheric pressure. However, you can have two different situations here as illustrated by picture number one and picture number three. If the pressure of the gas is higher than the pressure of the atmosphere or the outside, then what's going to happen, of course, is there's more gas particles on this side, which means it's going to put down more pressure on this side, which means the liquid, the mercury, is going to come down some more on this side, and it's going to be going up more on this side. So then you have a difference in height. So here is shown as h centimeter. That difference in height corresponds to exactly the difference between the pressure in the inside versus the pressure on the outside. In this case, the pressure inside being higher. So then if you want to know what the pressure of the gas is using this manometer, what you'll do is you'll take the pressure of the outside and then you'll add that number H, which corresponds to the difference in the height, okay? 
Now, of course, both of these have to be in the same unit. So in this case, millimeters of mercury or millimeters of water or whatever liquid you use. In picture three, it's the opposite case. You have pressure of the gas in this case being lower than outside pressure. So the outside is exerting higher pressure. So then you have this flipped picture where it's lower on the right side here and it's uh, higher on the left side that's exposed to the gas. So in this case, we know the pressure of the gas is lower than the outside pressure. So whatever that difference is, if that's H, you'll have to take pressure of the gas would be pressure outside subtracted by that number h right so p outside minus h okay so i want to close this video off by working uh, through an example on how to calculate pressure of a gas using a manometer concept that we just talked about so let's say you have um, a barometer in your lab um, and you measure the pressure of the atmosphere to be 764.7 torr on a, on a given day, okay? And then you uh, have a manometer as well and you attach that manometer to a sample of gas whose pressure you're trying to determine. And basically the setup looks something like this. You have the pressure from the outside, the atmosphere, and then you have the pressure of the gases. So this is your manometer and you connect it and you find in this case that the height of the mercury uh, at the open end okay is 136.4 millimeter okay uh, and the height you know from the arm that's in contact with the gas is 100.3 103.8 millimeter okay so the picture of the manometer and the setup and these numbers are shown right here the question then is, what's the pressure of the gas inside the flask in this case uh, in both units of atmosphere and kilopascals? So if, going back to this question, right, if you look at the, the way the picture looks uh, at this point here, you can tell that in this case, the pressure of the gas is actually higher than the pressure of the atmosphere because you have a setup where the, it's, the mercury is lower on this side and it's higher on this side. And remember what we said earlier, that means that this height, this H here, corresponds to the pressure differential. So if the pressure of the atmosphere is a given number, okay, which we were told is 764.7 torr, then it should be fairly straightforward to figure out what is the pressure of the gas. And in this case, the pressure of the gas is higher, so it's going to be pressure of the atmosphere plus H. And so we're going to do that. We're going to figure out what H is. Pressure uh, at, of the atmosphere, we just said it's 764 uh, torr, which is the same as millimeters of mercury. And then we're going to add to that H. Well, what's H? H is just the difference between these two numbers that are given to you in the question, as you can see pretty clearly from this diagram. It's basically just 136 minus 103.8, right? So 136.4 minus 103.8 millimeters of mercury okay and if you add all of those numbers together you should get the following as your and that answer would be 797.3 millimeters of mercury now the question asks you to convert this to atmosphere and kilopascal which I hope it's uh, fairly easy for you to do I'm just gonna give you the answers here and you can do it on your own as a, as a conversion type problems, a dimensional analysis type problem, so hopefully you'll get the same answer as I do here. So in units of kilopascal, this would be about 106.3, this is kilopascal, and in units of ATM, that would be fairly close to 1 ATM, and it'll be 1.049 ATM, okay? All right, so um, I hope that the video clarifies the concept of pressure, and we'll talk more about this in class.